It's Python on Hardware time. Blinka, blinka, blinka. There is so much going on in the world of Python on Hardware. Oh my goodness. But we'll try to get to it as fast as we can. So big news, um, you know, in the maker world, there's uh, boards that I think we all kind of grew up with. And one of them has been the Teensy uh, that Paul has been making and shipping. We've been From selling the 1890 <laughs> USB 162 all the way up to the That's Teensy right. 4. And we've been um, having this in our store in a long time and we're really happy that we were able to not only get Circuit Python running on the Teensy, but showing our work live. So Arturo Scott um, got a build and a version. There's lots of Teensies out there. Lots of people got the, the 4.0 Teensies. So they're able to experiment right away. And one of the cool things, um, in addition to Circuit Python going to Teensy, is this new chip, this new chip from NXP, super fast, low cost. So we're going to get a bunch of benefits. And I think as a community of people who do electronics, we're going to start to think, what does it mean to have uh, Python for hardware on a very fast chip? You have yeah. to think about things a little bit different. Where does the code come from? Where are things stored? Yep. So that'll be kind of neat. Um, but, uh, and this is where I think it gets really cool. So because CircuitPython gets you so many things when you have it on a board, um, I didn't see any IoT Teensy projects. There are not a lot. And that's why the there codes, are some, but that's why the co I didn't see a lot. Not as many as like all the boards that are made for that. Yeah. Like that's not its core thing. It's like a lot of audio projects. Audio, yeah. new pixels. So once once we had CircuitPython running in like less than 20 minutes, you were able to put together an IoT project um, with the Teensy. And I'm going to play that video now. And it just worked. It was like one of those things where it's like, whoa, like that was a little too easy. It, so. it pretty much, I only had to, uh, the default I squared C speed was a little fast, so I just had to slow that down. And then there, the SPI frequency was also twice as fast as it should be. So I just had to tweak it. I mean, these are common things that happen when you have a new platform. Yeah. So I opened up issues, those will be fixed. But once I just fixed the speed um, for the peripherals, everything just worked fine. So uh, take it away. Uh, it took longer to answer the door and get a snack than it did do this project. Testing out our new uh, preview build of CircuitPython for the IMX NXP RT1062, which is also the same chip used in the Teen C4. So this is the Teen C4 on my Teen C to Feather adapter. I've got. Did you make an IoT Teen C? I did. IoT Teen C. IoT Teen C. Okay. It's got an OLED Feather wing and then our Airlift ESP32 coprocessor for Wi-Fi connectivity. This is actually going to the Adafruit website and getting um, these quotes from our JSON quote server. And uh, it just connects to the internet, gets this JSON data, splits the data up, and then uh, prints it nicely on the OLED line by line with a little delay. So it's about 100 lines of code for everything, including debug prints, which is pretty cool. It only took me like 15 minutes to put this together. And it's how I'm testing I squared C and SPI in CircuitPython on the Teen C4. All right. IoT, IoT projects for the Teensy, IoT Teensy. Yes. <laughs> it's, harder, it's harder for you to say the word than it is to build the code. Yeah. So uh, Arturo and Lady Ada are working together on a Feather version. Yes, this is the 1011. Yeah. It's, not, it's not nearly as powerful and big as the 1062, which is the Teensy 4. But what is nice about this chip is it's really inexpensive. The 1011 is like under $2, and yeah. it's 500 megahertz. It's got uh, 128K of RAM. Um, but again, you have to, you know, that's not just RAM. You have to put your uh, processing code There's in there, some too. Renderings. Some renderings. We've got NeoPixel going on there. We've got yeah. Q -Spy. We cannot call it the Feather M711, because 711 probably wouldn't like that, although that would be a fun name. It's the M7 1011. Yeah. Okay. USB-C, though. So moving to USB-C. USB-C for lots of stuff. And Stemma it's got connector. a Stemma Q2 connector, yeah. This is the future. Uh, lots of things are feather-shaped. Lots of things have Stemma-like -like connectors. it'll be fast. It won't be big, lots but it'll be fast. So you'll be able to run fairly large um, projects in it, but it's just not going to have as much RAM as like the NRF52840. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Yeah, what's good is you can choose which chip and which thing you want to do. It's like, I want to do a project like this, but I, I want to just learn Circuit Python once. I want to learn Python just once. And then you just pick the chip. Oh, I want Wi-Fi. Okay, let me get this board. Oh, I want Bluetooth. I want, I'll get this board. Oh, I want something super fast. I'll get this board. Oh, I want something that, that's e-ink. Oh, I want it all built into one. I'll get a Pi Portal. It's yeah. kind of cool. So if you go to circuitpython.org slash downloads, not only will you see a new uh, updated site that we just released, and I'll talk about that next week on the show because we're probably going to do a video around that, 
but you'll be able to see all the the boards. There's a menagerie. There's 98 altogether. We'll have 100 by next week. Definitely. And more than half are not from Adafruit. Correct. So no one could say this is just an Adafruit thing. It's actually it's not. It's actually a big old community. And thing. we're happy to accept anybody's board definitions. We merged like two or three a week. Yeah. In fact, I usually have to. I, I spend more time hassling people who are making boards to please, please, please submit PRs. Yeah, submit your PRs. Please submit your PRs. Okay, we wrapped up the Circuit Python 2020. Um, each year we've been doing Circuit Python. We're like, what do you want from Circuit Python? Uh, what can we do together? So you can look at the past ones. We also have all the 2020 ones. So there is a bunch. You should go to the site and read them all. There is at least um, over a dozen ish. Yeah, there's like 20 um, or 30. Plus, with all the comments, there's probably like maybe 50 or 60 people plus just comments from around the web where we were able to collect them and you could take a look at them and you can see probably what our roadmap is for the year. So if you're curious where all this is going, we do this out in the open. So um, you can always tune in at any time. Projects from the community, um, it had to happen. Baby Yoda with the Circuit Playground, uh, it's glowing. It's just green inside mm, of a 3D cool. printed yeah. Baby Yoda. Well, that's what people want. Uh, folks are using Circuit Python and PyPortals for um, projects. This is for an event. This is uh, the Undercroft. They're having a Python and PyPortal event on 129. Uh, it's bring your own portal. I kind of think that's fun. B uh, Y O P. I just love the graphics. Yeah, Beautiful. It's cool. Next up. Um, Joey has been working on, you probably know him from the Open Book Project, used to do feathers in through hole versions and uh, posted up Funky. some great photos of them. It's um, a chunky. Yeah, it's a simple Sam D11 feather yeah. that was uh, through hole. Um, Doctor Who is back on the air for the holiday season, uh, after the holiday season show. So, of course, a lot of people noticed that there was a meeting of the Doctor and Ada Lovelace. A, took photos of the screen and then said, oh, I'm working on this too. So if you like electronics and uh, who's called the first programmer, Ada Lovelace, uh, Doctor Who from the BBC is now playing. There's a fun game. This is called Don't Step, step on the Snack. <laughs> no Step on Snack. Um, help Blinkets skip a variety of feet in this Frogger clone developed on the Adafruit badge. And uh, I think this is from uh, Fummy. What is from Fummy? Yeah. Um, this is kind of cool. This is a pie badge, and the pie badge has... It's like a plotter. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? So this is a pie work. badge is a serial plotter. That's fun. Yeah, and this was also from Joey, who worked on the feather um, and the open book. This is a badge that someone made with their own 3D printed lanyard holder, and it's called OrcaCon. This is an electronic communication badge made with the blue fruit, TFT gizmo, oh, and, and a 3D printed lanyard. You say like whether you want people to talk to you, or yeah. you're social, or you're feeling antisocial, you exactly. want some exactly introversion time. Yeah. You just select the graphic, and there's an orca. That's right. Uh, this is cool. This is a very advanced NeoPixel suit. Yes. And this kid's in the future. Yeah. This is um, what it's like to file your taxes in 2050. Um, other cool NeoPixel projects. This is a wearable. That's nice. Yeah, this is uh, fashioned after uh, Madonna's uh, outfit that people probably know from the 90s, but now with NeoPixels. Gautier. Yeah. But with LEDs. We've been still doing our 2019 best of. And so in all of 2019, the number one downloaded project was a CircuitPython project. It was the Sister Knight goggles. Oh, great. Um, Ashley here played Sister Knight in the show. It was Regina King. And for the code that made all this work was CircuitPython. So check it out. Also, um, our top product of 2019, top new product, already rocketed to top of the charts. It was Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. We also had a bunch of top tens of videos, and a lot of the new product videos were things like Pygamer, so CircuitPython has become a big part of what we do here all year long, and probably 2020 will even be more of that. Um, our friend Lorraine Underwood has a new book coming out. I have it on pre-order. I will immediately show this off as soon as I get it. Save the world with code. Um, if someone has to save the world, why not with code? Um, 20 projects with kids using Raspberry Pi, Microbit, and the Circuit Playground Express. So all those things are Python-powered. You'll probably enjoy it. Check it out. Save the world with code. 
You can find that on Amazon and other places where you buy books from. Um, this is kind of neat. This is a, a, a world collide. So Mitch was hanging out with the folks who do a bunch of Circuit Python. This was uh, Code and Solder, and this was from Discord. Um, it was the Open Tech Day in Delhi, and what's the quote? Ease of getting and running Circuit Python uh, left everyone awestruck. So that uh, was the reason that there's an infrared receiver and transmitter on the Circuit Playground Express is because of Mitch. He, oh, Mitch, he yeah. asked to put that on. I was like, yes, you can do TVB gone type projects, and that's why every Circuit Playground Express has infrared on it. All right. If you're in Melbourne this weekend, there is the Pi Ladies Python meetup, and there is the MicroPython courses and classes. So this Saturday, check it out. Pi Ladies Melbourne meetup if you want to learn some MicroPython and you're in the area, this is for you. There's an upcoming event, it's Pi Cascades. It's less than 29 days away. This is from Nina. Made a countdown timer with the Pi Portal. Um, Pi Cascades is February 8th and 9th. Scott will be speaking there. So if you want to meet Scott or talk to other like-minded people in the world of Python and more, or meet new people, this is an event for you. And that's our Python on hardware this week. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Yeah, okay.